Praise the Lord. So, um, it's interesting. Um, as I was, you know, I was praying, thinking about what to share for the next, you know, Reflection Sunday. And God is funny. He always, you know, gives me a word either right before or weeks before. And he allows me to, you know, just really meditate and think about it. So I came across John 10.10, 10, but I saw it in a different version. And it's the New Living Translation, where it says that thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Read it again. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Now, from my memory, I've always heard ministers focus on the latter part of that verse, quickly reading by the first. So when I read it in this translation, the word purpose just like stood out to me. So then I looked up purpose, and the definition that I liked the most was was in the noun form, which is the reason for which something is done or created, or which something exists. So then when I was thinking about the part where it says, for which something is done, or which it's, I'm sorry, the something is done or created, or for which something exists, I kind of substituted that for the thief's purpose. Mm -hmm. So he exists solely to kill and to destroy us. Mm -hmm. God, his desire, and he exists to give us a rich and satisfying life. Amen. And I'm grateful for God's goodness. I'm grateful that, you know, for his mercy. And, and that has been my for, been in the forefront for me for a very long time is God's goodness, his grace, and his mercy. But sometimes we forget that just like God wants to overtake us with blessings, there's an adversary out there who wants to take us out as well. Yes. And I think sometimes as the body of Christ, we, we get those itching ears that we focus on the good things, the, the, you know, the prosperity messages, the favor messages, and it is awesome. And it's good to focus on the good thing, but sometimes we need to be reminded that when we wake up, there's an enemy who's after us. So when we wake up, we need to wake up with God. We need to end our day with God. At some point, he needs to be somewhere in our focus um, throughout the day because there, there is someone, there's an enemy that's assigned to you who watches you. And just like you are praying and you're being real with God, you're saying, God, I have these addictions, I have these issues, that enemy is listening to you. So you have to be vigilant and be mindful. You know, we, this is in our home. We are ambassadors. And it's like, you know, I think about, you know, those countries that are constantly at war. Those people don't live like the way we live. They don't walk into a coffee shop and just are relaxed. They have to be aware that there could be a bomb, there could be a, a, someone coming in who can shoot up the place. Just like they are vigilant, we need to be aware. It's not being fearful, but it's being woke. It's being aware that there is somebody who is the adversary who's watching you and he's waiting for an opportunity to wipe you out and to take away your faith. And sometimes it's not about him just killing you, but it's about him killing your faith. So, in the same New Living Translation version, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, it says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a wrong lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the earth is going through the same kind of suffering you are. So that's also a reminder of knowing that, you know, <laughs> Now, why is this happening to me, Lord? Because there are other people in the body who are suffering and who are going through the same thing you're going through. So it's not to just be vigilant and pray for ourselves, but it's pray for each other. Like, we are really under an attack. So it's not to, I'm not trying to incite fear and for us to be, like, nervous, but it's just stay alert and just stay in tune. Like, I think it's just important to just be to practice his presence, to be mindful of him. If it's just praying in the spirit on your way to work, or, or if you're at work, you know, you walk into the bathroom, pray in the spirit. It's, it's important just to be in tune to him because sometimes God speaks to us through promptings or he'll speak through somebody's, you know, just somebody you wouldn't even think about. You know, they're just speaking and something just jumps out. God is constantly speaking to us and he's warning us. 
You know, so just be mindful of the time that we're in. Know that this is in our home. It's not be, you know, complacent. You know, it, it's this is this is a war. This is an ongoing war. There's somebody who is after you to wipe you out. And you may not be able to kill your body, but if he can kill your spirit, he is one. So stay vigilant, stay alert. And, you know, thank God that in the latter half of God says his purpose is to give us a rich and satisfying life. It's God's desire for us to live a full life. Um, and that's what you should focus on, and, but also be mindful in the back of your mind that there's an enemy after you. So stay in your word, you know, listen to sermons, you know, have the break, the word playing for you, you know, put little posties at your desk. Anything just to make sure that you are practicing his presence, that he is there and that you are aware that he's there. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. First, I want to thank I want to thank God for bringing my wife through this week. Amen. Uh, for bringing us all through this week. Yes. But yes. My wife, because of her health problems, so uh, you know we've been kind of in a down cycle. But she was really good this week. Um, Praise the Lord. And you know, even in those down cycles, I always know that God's going to bring us through them. Um, but sometimes with my wife when she has pain and she's crying, and sometimes I am too, it's hard to remember um, that we're going to get through this. Yeah. I know that in my heart, um, and so does, so does my, my wife. We just, uh, sometimes it's, it's, you get caught up uh, in the moment, but this is a good week, um, and I, I just believe there are many more to come, so I'm yeah. really thankful Lord. for that. You know, the one thing that um, God always reminds me is that uh, as a Christian, there are always people looking at you. Um, some of those people are looking at you so that they can model the same behavior. Others are looking at you to see if you mess up uh, and expecting you to mess up. Um, so that's always in my mind that I need to, to do what God wants me to do because there are other people looking. Um, you know, this, speaking of people who, speaking of enemies and things, you know, as a, a painting company, um, we're out in the sun uh, a lot. We're out in the sun all this week. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, some of the people that, that work with me, they're, they're not always feeling friendly uh, as, <laughs> as the sun reaches its height Amen. and we're out there. But, um, and some of them, uh, younger and, and older, um, you know, it, it's really, really can be, try your try your spirit um, when you're out there all day. Um, but um, one of the the guys came up to me and said, "Why is it it doesn't seem to bother you? You're not sweating. Um, <laughs> you, you you're not complaining. Oh, I don't understand." So I said, "Well, look, first I don't do anything in my own strength." I know that from the beginning. I, I, I depend on God for, for my energy and for my strength. And I said, I don't want to sweat. I, I, it doesn't feel good. It, it looks bad. You know, I mean, it, it's not something I want to do. And God allows me not to do that. And I, I keep my mind on God. I said, he, he gives me the energy to get through. I know that in the morning, God is going to see me through the day, no matter what comes up. And so I depend on that for my energy. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm almost 70 now, but it, it really doesn't seem, uh, you know, I've depended on God for my strength for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the years just don't seem to make a whole lot of difference. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was funny because he said, well, the, the young guys over there, they think you're crazy because you know you just you just keep working. You're not that's not a problem. And he said, and we laugh and we talk as we go uh, throughout the day. And but I said to him, well, that young guy over there, um, he always talks to me about God. He's always talk. He's always asking questions. Mm. And I said, I want to present the right image, the, the right character for him because he knows that uh, church is very important to me. He knows that God is very important to me. It's important to, sometimes I'll do things 
that I really don't want to do, but I know it's the right thing to do, and I know that others are watching. I know that that young man is watching. And I know that that older man is watching. Yeah. I said, um, so I do those things to present the right image so that God will be seen in the right light and that uh, they'll know that this is a business that's created by God for God mm -hmm. and it's going to follow the principles that God would have us uh, to follow. And uh, he said, well, uh, I, I haven't been going to church um, because you know there were a lot of things that it's my only day off because we were working yesterday too. And he said, it's my only day off. And I said, wait, let me stop you. <laughs> it's your only day off. You need to rest. You have family things that you need to do. Uh, I said, I, you know, I, I hear all of that. I know all that. I said, but guess what? You don't have any more to do than I do. <laughs> and I go to church every Sunday. And you know what? He said, when I go in the church, um, I'm often tired. I come out of the church less tired, feeling much better. Uh, I said, you ought to try it. You know, it might, <laughs> might actually work for you. And he said, you know, maybe, maybe. I'm not sure he will. Right. Uh, but I know that all of the others uh, who are working for me, they all watch me. Um, they all know that I consider it a godly business. They all watch their language. They all, none of them listen to uh, crazy music. Uh, actually, I don't let them listen to music at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they need to concentrate on the work. They're not, they're not, they're not good enough. To yes. Music. <laughs> so, so, uh, but I am God. God's, there's an image that I want to present. It doesn't matter whether it's to one person or to 20 people. I want them to know it. Among other things, the primary thing is that I am a representative of God. Amen. Amen. I want to do what God wants me to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Um, I, I, well, you know, last week the uh, pastor was talking about dreams. You know, and we should, um, God gives us a dream and we should uh, follow back to it and hold on to it. You know, until it comes to pass. And it's funny because he's, that was his message last week. And that was going to be my reflection last week when he called me up here. But God changed me. God changed it on me. So um, I think because he wanted to say something else, anyway, he did. <laughs> but um, I, I'm, I, my reflection is about dreams as connected to your purpose. And uh, so I just wanted to read a scripture, uh, of course, Habakkuk, uh, chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. And it says, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. But still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. And that was one scripture that uh, God spoke to me about the dreams and the vision. And then there was another scripture that I had. He gave me it was Psalm 138, 8. And we know this scripture. It's, um, it's talking about the Lord perfect those things that concern us. But I saw it in another version. It was the, the English Standard Version. And it says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. And then Jeremiah 1 and 5 talks about purpose as well. And it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you, I appointed you a prophet to the nations. So, um, just thinking about purpose and meditating on it, uh, I don't know when it was, I think it was um, maybe a couple of months ago, I, we chanced 
upon an interview that somebody was having with Gerard Carmichael. And he is a comedian. He's a young comedian. And they were talking to him about the show that he has on the air, the Carmichael show. I don't know if anybody's ever watched it. It's a pretty good show. It, it's kind of, he reaches out there, <laughs> you know, he, he deals with some very sensitive issues and he makes light of them because he's a comedian, of course, and that's what they do. But um, he was talking and it just sort of uh, stuck with me because they were asking him about, you know, the show and how it came to be and how he went from being on stage as a comedian to having his own show. And he said that it was something that was placed in his heart a long time ago, a real long time ago. And he said that um, he, he wanted to be on television and the producers, uh, they knew this, and they had offered him a spot as a comedian on uh, some other show, I think the, the show with the waitresses. I forget the name of the show, but that's not important. <laughs> But um, they offered him a spot on this show, and he said, but he said no, and they offered to him like three times, and he said no, because he had this vision, this dream of doing his own show, his own television show. And eventually, uh, NBC offered him his show, his own comedy show, and they gave him the first time like six shows in one season. And, now he's in his second season, so they renewed him, and so he's, you know, so he's he's coming up. But anyway, that I just been, um, I guess I've been thinking about that, and uh, every now and then it just pops up, especially when I read my devotionals, and purpose comes up, and dreams come up, and visions, and things that God has placed in our hearts, you know, that we should not uh, remove ourselves from it. We shouldn't let it. Uh, disappear. We need to hold on to it and keep believing, you know, that God has put that thing in us and that God is going to bring it to pass, just like he said. Just like, uh, you know, Gerard, this Carmichael show, he, he never gave up on, you know, having this show. And Pastor Jeff talked about, you know, dreams and uh, the visions that it was a, it's a, it's a, cher it's a cherished ambition that that it's just something that you just desire to do so much that you just have to you know you feel a need to do it and i'm just thinking about that even with like ministry and and things that god has placed in us you know vision and purpose and how important it is to to stay in it what god has purposed you to do and um you know i sort of like fell back from the dreams and visions that God has placed in my heart. Like, I like to write, you know? But I stopped writing for a time because I just, you know, I just didn't want to anymore. But I found that as I started going back, when we went away um, to Chicago and I started just concentrating on writing and the vision that God placed in my heart, I found that I was actually walking in my purpose. And in doing that, God started speaking more and more stuff. So I got stuff from this direction and this direction. And I look at things and I could see and I could think I have something else to write about. So it's something about fulfilling the purpose that God has for you, that God has placed in your heart. It's a purpose, but it's also a dream because you, you can uh, see yourself there. You can see yourself doing it. And it's just something that, so it's important for us, like if God has given us a vision and he's given us a dream and he's given us, he's put purpose in that. Amen. There's a reason that he's given that to you and we need to hold on to it like for dear life because that thing, that when we're walking in that purpose and we're fulfilling it, it can actually speak life to us. You know, that's what happened with me. It can actually speak life back to our our spirits, if, we're, if we feel dry or anything, it may be because we're not uh, fulfilling that purpose or holding on to that dream that God has given us. So it was just a thought as, you know, God has um, placed in my heart about the dream and the vision. And, and um, lastly, just, uh, I guess it was just the other day, 
I was sitting at my desk, and I, and I know the song, um, Yolanda Adams sings a song about keeping the dream alive. And I'm just sitting at my desk, and I heard the song, and it, I, I just had to stop and just listen to the words. And I wrote them down. And it said, keep the dream alive, don't let it die. If something deep inside keeps inspiring you to try, don't stop. Don't ever give up on you. And it said, sometimes life can place a stumbling block in your way, but keep the faith. Bring what's deep inside your heart to the light, come what may. So it's like, okay, those words are from God. You know, just keep whatever it is that he has for you or whatever vision that he's given you because he's, he's given us all visions and dreams and hopes and inspirations and all those things. Whatever it is, just hold on to it. And even if it doesn't seem like, you know, it's coming to pass, the scripture says, write the vision, Amen. make it plain that, you know, one day he's going to bring it to pass. It's going to come just like with the Carmichael show. He knew it was going to come. It was just a matter of time. But hold on to it. Don't let it die. Go after it because you're fulfilling the purpose that God has for you. Because now with that show, he's opening eyes. Even if he's doing it in a light way, he's still bringing truth to the front, you know, that people need to hear and people need to know about. So I, I just thank God for vision. I thank God for purpose and and and, and uh, everything that God just right. just inspires us with. And just something, uh, one more thing uh, Patricia said about the scripture, John 10 and 10, and she read in a different version, and she said that God's purpose is to give us a rich and a satisfying life. That's his purpose. So if his purpose is to give us a rich and a satisfying life, if he's put a vision or a dream inside of us, his purpose is going to be fulfilled. We're going to have a rich and satisfying life if we fulfill the dream that he's he's put inside of us. So I just thank God. I just thank, just thank God for vision, dreams, purpose, and everything. I just thank God for his word because God is real. Amen. Amen. Praise God, Amen. I, I I had to go and had to go and get my my notebook, Amen. My Reflection Sunday notebook. I have all my notes in it, Amen. And uh, and this is this is good because it allows me as I as I listen, right? Because God speaks with one voice, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible lets us know there's no schism in the Godhead. Right? There's no division in God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but the three are one, right? And um, so there's no division. And, you know, even with some of the things that, even though each one of you spoke on different things, there is, is still something in here that, for me anyway, just ties all together, right? Because, you know, the, because you started really with purpose. Sister mm -hmm. Patricia, right? You know, about the, the the reason for which something is done or created or the reason why it exists. And it's really interesting, right? Because, you know, that scripture talks about, you know, the devil's purpose. It talks about God's purpose. And then at the end, really, you know, Sister Fennell is talking about our purpose, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes, you know, we got to make sure we don't leave ourselves out of the equation. We are purpose-filled people, too. Amen. You know, we're not just here for no reason. We're not just here to, you know, take up resources and then leave, right? Amen. Use up resources and leave. God has a purpose for us, right? And, you know, we, it is through those visions and dreams, as Sister Vanell talked about and as God talked about with us last week, right? That God speaks to us, mm -hmm. right? Many of the things that you are doing right now or, you know, you have done in your past was the result of you following through on a vision that you had. Yes, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it may not be like, you know, some of the visions and dreams in the Bible are so dramatic. Mm -hmm. Right? We come to know that the, that the vision and dream doesn't have to be dramatic to be powerful. 
-hmm. right? It could be something that's real simple. Yes. It could be one or two words that are spoken unto you at, at a time, and it just ignites your spirit. Mm -hmm. And then you have an anchor to hold on to, and you go on going after that. Right? Yeah. It's, it's not going to be some big, the sky's not going to crack. Right? But it still yet is true. And so, you know, to, to hear Patricia talk about purpose and also just saying we got to stay alert because, see, the enemy knows that people of God are filled with purpose. Oh, yeah. And so what's he want to do? He wants to strip you of your purpose. He wants to strip you of your ability to believe on it. Right? Get you off of it. Um, and, you know, Sister Fennell said you must stay in it. Right? If you stay in it, then God... And she said, for her, we just give you more and more and more. Because God, well, he, he builds on things, right? Line by line, precept by precept. Okay. And so we have those as bookends, right? The purpose and, and, and you know, on the one hand, as Patricia talked about, the dreams on the other hand, that sort of fuel that purpose for us. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle, we have Brother Les talking about, you know, how we live our lives, yeah. right? Because... When you are living on purpose, people are watching you. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Right? They are watching you. They're watching you to see if you're going to stay on your post, right? Or if you're going to deviate from it so they can go, uh huh, I knew it. Because there are a lot of people who are looking. Oh, glory to God. Do you, when, 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 Paul, when Paul was gathering up the sticks on the island of Malta because it was cold and he was trying to build a fire, and he put the sticks out and a snake came and, 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 and fastened on his hand. The scripture said that people just looked at him, expecting him to die. And he shook the snake off. They looked at him, expecting him to die. And then when he didn't die, they said he was a god. <laughs> yeah. right? mm -hmm. And that's how people are, mm -hmm. right? They'll just stand there. It didn't say the scripture, they didn't say that they tried to help him. They just looked at him. People are always just looking at you. And then unfortunately, there are a lot of people who are looking at you and expecting you to die, expecting you to fail, expecting you to give up, expecting yes. you to throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. But then when you don't, they're ready to heap praises on you. And if we're walking in the right spirit, when they heap the praise, you say, don't praise me. Praise God. Yes. Right? So, so yes, but let them be watching you because you, you have a purpose and a vision. And you said, you said it, it, the way you put it was, what you say here? You said, hold on, I know I wrote it down. Oh, <laughs> that this business was created by God for God. <laughs> Amen. Right. <laughs> right? So, see, that's vision. That's not just somebody saying, I, I drew up a business plan. Anybody can draw up a business plan. But when you say that this, my business was created by God, for God, that means God showed you something. Right? And gave you a blueprint on how you are to conduct yourself in that business. And people are watching you to see whether or not you're going to be consistent with it. If your walk is going to match your talk. Yes. Right? And so, so here we have Patricia talking about purpose and Sister now talking about dreams and purpose. And in the middle of that, you're talking about people watching you oh, to yeah. see if you're going to be true to your purpose. Wow. Right? And that's the thing I take from, the, from, the, from what the three of you have said uh, on today. And it, and it really is encouraging because you, you said it right, Patricia. I'm not trying to scare you and all that kind of thing. It's just real. You do have a real enemy, your adversary, the devil, right? Walks around trying to get you off point, trying to devour you, right? So it's not about being, being afraid or being fearful or anything like that, but it is about understanding that if we're filled with purpose, there's an enemy who wants to strip you of that purpose, yes. right? If we're filled with purpose, there are people who are standing there watching us who won't assist us to reach our purpose any more than those people assisted Paul when the snake was on his hand. They're just standing there waiting for you to fail in your purpose. Amen. It's just a reality. Don't get mad at them. Just realize that that's what it is. And then as Sister Fennell said, stay in it. Amen. Right? Stay on point. 
right? Because the Bible is filled, and I don't know if you talk about Jared Carmichael, but the Bible is filled with people who were given vision and had to stay in it, yeah. right? Abraham comes to mind first of all, right? 25 years he had to wait for his son. The last thing I would say is this, because um, I, I, I heard this and it just really spoke to my heart too. Um, when when uh, Sister Fennell was talking about the young man, Jared Carmichael, uh, notice what he said. He said, you know, three times he was offered a spot on another show. See, sometimes the enemy will offer you something. See, the enemy's a counterfeit. Yes. Right? And counterfeits, right, real true counterfeits who are good at what they do in counterfeiting mm -hmm. will always present you something that closely resembles the original. Wow. Right? They're not going to give you something that's, right, we talked about it before, right? You're not going to see Samuel L. Jackson on a $5 bill. Right? The counterfeit's not going to do that. It still will have Abraham Lincoln on the bill, but something about the bill is going to be counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Right? So see, here, sometimes amen, something is presented to you that's close to your vision, but it ain't quite it. And you got to know right. what it is God spoke to you. See, 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 if, 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 if all Mr. Carmichael heard was be on TV, then when he was offered that show on somebody, he was offered the spot on somebody else's show, he would have taken it. Mm -hmm. But when you know, uh-uh, my show, <laughs> right? Now you can say no. We said this last week. When you're filled with vision, it helps your decision making. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Right? So even if the world says, are you crazy? They're offering to put you on TV. You go, but that's not the vision. Amen. See, now it's easy to say no spiritually, where naturally it would be hard to say no. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're not on television yet. Right? But but also, too, just let you know that sometimes the enemy will try to sneak in with something that counterfeits the vision that God has given you. That's right. Amen? In order to get you off point. It may seem like it's good, but it's not best. Because God, what God has for you is the best. Amen. Right? Amen. And and if, and if God's giving you something that and, and it's the best, don't settle for good, <laughs> right? Don't settle for good. Don't settle for better. The the standard is best, right? Yeah. And that only comes from God. So I look at this, Amen. And I got my notes, and I don't know about you guys, but that's what I took out of it, Amen. I put it together, and it it, it it's encouraging to me to you know to also to this. To, to stay on point, um, but also to just to harken back to what we heard at the top, it comes from being in God's presence, Amen. right? Dream ain't just gonna drop out of the sky, Amen. right? We're gonna have the purpose to get before God and stay before God um, uh, in order to receive these things and to be filled with His purpose. Amen. 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 Amen.